Welcome to Punnett Squares Example 1, Single Trait Cross. The second toe being longer than the big toe is a dominant trait. So let's look at our possible alleles. I'm going to choose the letter T because we're talking about toes. The dominant allele is always the capital letter. So in this case, the dominant allele will show as a capital T and the recessive allele we will show as a small t. So the dominant trait is that the second toe is longer. So the big T will be for the second toe being longer and the small t will show that the second toe is shorter. Now let's look at the question. A man who is heterozygous for this condition has a child with a woman whose second toe is longer, whose mother's second toe was shorter. What are the chances that this child will have a long second toe? So let's look at the parents. Here we have a man who is heterozygous. We know that this man, therefore, has to have one dominant allele and one recessive allele because heterozygous is telling us that his two alleles are different. So his second toe will be longer than his big toe because he is heterozygous. Now it tells us as well in the question that the woman has a longer second toe but her mother's second toe was shorter. If her mother's second toe was shorter, it meant that she had two recessive alleles. So the only allele that the mother had to pass on to the woman, so the mother had to pass on to the woman, was one recessive allele. But because her second toe is longer, it means that she also has to have a dominant allele. This is another way to say that the woman is heterozygous as well. So her second toe is longer, but because her mother had a shorter second toe, she only carried the recessive allele to pass on. So now that we know the woman and the man, we can look at our Punnett square. We will always take one from the top, one allele from the top and one from the side based on the square we're looking at. So in this square, we are going to get one of each of these, which in this case is two big T's, one from this side, one from the top. Now when we look at this square, we're going to be bringing one T over from the side here and one T from up here. So we have one dominant allele and one recessive allele or one big T and one small T. When we look at this square, We'll get one T from this side, but we also get one T from the top. So in this case, we have one large T from the top and one small T from this side. Now in our last box over here, we have one allele coming from the top and one allele coming from this side. So in this box, we now have two small T's. So when we look at our four squares in the Punnett square, we have two large t's, a large t and a small t, a large t and a small t, and now two small t's. So when we look at the question, the question asked us, what are the chances that this child will have a long second toe? Because the dominant allele is having a long second toe, both the homozygous dominant condition as well as the heterozygous conditions will all result in a long second toe, which means that in terms of the chances, there is a 1 in 4 chance that a the child would be homozygous dominant and a 2 in 4 chance that the child would be heterozygous. All 3 out of 4 of those chances would result in a long second toe. So the answer to this question is there is a 75% chance because of 3 out of 4 boxes resulting in a long second toe. Had the question asked what the chances are that the child would have a longer big toe or a short second toe, we could only look at the box that had the two recessive alleles. So two recessive alleles, in this case two small t's, is the only case where we would see the child having a short second toe.